Lockdowns again. Hey everybody, it's Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. Yeah. You know why? Because they did it and got away with it the first time. So, of course, I have no doubt you're going to try to lock us down again. Do I think it will be a nationwide thing or localized to areas and states that already did it and are more, sustain or more susceptible to doing things like that and getting away with it? Or people liking it and going along with it? I don't know. I don't understand how somebody would like it. But yes, I see it could be a national thing. So what are the lessons learned from the first time? What lessons did you learn? We all learn different lessons. Because we all have different weaknesses. We all have different strengths. We're all in different areas. We all have different needs and wants. So it affected all of us differently. So analyze and think about how it affected you. Think about what you're going to do, what your plans are, <clears throat> if another lockdown comes. Are you just going to shelter in place? Are you going to comply? Are you going to resist? Are you going to just ignore it? Um, what are you going to do? What supplies do you need to stock up on now if they do it? and say stores are just closed. Some situations you don't have a choice but to comply with. Like when they shut down restaurants, gyms, stuff like that. Well, you can't keep going if it's not open. So you, there's nothing you can do about that. But what can you do to set yourself up for success? One of the things is growing your own food. Just picked this one this morning and uh, we're gonna chow it. Growing your own food, like the corn behind me, like the thinner stalks over here, the Jerusalem artichokes, and you see all the uh, squash and potatoes and all the stuff like that. You guys have seen, if you have watched my channel, you've seen the, uh, my garden. Speaking of, which if you've seen my videos, if you like the channel, please subscribe, please hit the like button, please ring the notification bell, comments, are also welcome. Anything that helps with the algorithm. And sharing the videos. And telling people about this channel and other preparedness channels. It's not just about me and my channel. It's about everybody, the community. I've said before, we all look at things from different perspective, from a different mindset, from a different skill set. So we all have different things to say. We may be, ba you know, a lot of the prepper channels say and cover a lot of the same topics. Of course we do, because they're important. That's why we go over them all the time. But from maybe a little different twist on it, maybe a little different perspective, maybe the way I say something really gets through to you. Maybe something that another channel says really gets through to you. But anyway, we need to be ready for potential lockdowns growing our own food. It's August, but you can still plant. I planted peas that are coming up like crazy again already. I planted some more beans that are coming up like crazy already because I harvested some potatoes. Stockpile what you need though. What are some things that I've seen that are short supply of lately? Um, those, those really nice flexible garden hoses, because mine, like somebody said, I was really impressed with it, talked about it in a video, and somebody said, oh yeah, in the extreme in heat, those things spring, spring leak, uh, pinhole leaks. What happened to mine? Leak. I'm like, okay, well I bought it at Costco. They have an awesome return policy. I'll just go back and get a new one. And if it sprouts a leak, I'll just take it back and get a new one. I'll have a new hose every couple months, every six months, whatever. I'm, like, I'm fine with that. Well, I took it back, got my money back, but they were out of stock. Lowe's doesn't have them. Uh, a lot of the places don't have those nice hoses. Now I got the heavier duty one. Um, and it's harder to move around the raised beds. Um, yeah, I, I lost one of my honeydews because of it. So I was kind of upset. But anyway, I've seen a shortage on those. 
<clears throat> I've seen shortages on paper bowls and paper plates. Go figure. I know it's summer. More people are getting out and doing things and being more active and using paper bowls, paper plates, um, you know, camping, uh, picnicking, stuff like that. But um, you figure businesses would know that and they'd prepare for it. But anyway, um, what, uh, what, what shortages are you guys seeing? What are you seeing less of? Think about that. And also think about where your food storage is, your water storage, uh, all the basics. Make sure you got the basics covered because it may be beyond your control the things that happen in a lockdown. They seriously may shut down stuff. Now they can't, well they can maybe. <laughs> I was about to say they can't just shut down totally like grocery stores and stuff because we have to eat. Well that's not true. They could. And what would you do about that? Well, we're preppers. We'd be fine, right? I would. What would they do though? Set up FEMA centers everywhere? Well, they don't. FEMA doesn't have the capability of feeding the nation. So I don't know what they would do. But anyway, I wouldn't put it past them. So, um, yeah, I think that, uh, I think it's a high likelihood of happening again. I live in Washington State, so yes, very high likelihood it's going to happen here. <laughs> yeah, um, the first one sucked. But I remember back when the first one happened and when this whole, you know, Charlie one niner thing started, it was scary. Because we didn't know anything yet. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything. And yeah, I was scared of my mind, especially with a, with, with a wife with lupus, and autoimmune disease, uh, immune compromised, those kind of things. Yes, it was scary. The unknown is scary. And then when you learn about it, it can still become, it can still be scary, depending on what we're talking about, or uh, you can understand it better and be able, better able to cope with it and deal with it. We cope with it and deal with it just fine. She has an autoimmune disease. I don't wear a mask anywhere. I'm just smart. I'm not stupid. I wash my hands. I take care of myself. Go figure. And I don't, I don't like being around lots of people anyway. So I don't go to like big events or anything like that. We don't go out to restaurants. We don't go to bars. Um, you know, anything like that. So think about the things that you can do to mitigate your risks and to prepare for potential lockdowns because they might be coming. So, why lock down? Why would they lock down? Did it accomplish anything the first time? Maybe. Really what I see lockdowns and a lot of the media putting out messages, pushing an agenda. A lot of these things, a lot of people talk about conspiracy, the conspiracy theories and stuff all the time. It's so funny how conspiracy theories are just theories in your whack job. But other theories are taken as the gospel by some people, like critical race theory. Still a theory. That's why it says theory. But anyway, <laughs> there are a lot of things in the conspiratorial world that kind of, if you look at all of it, if you look at them individually, you may be like, eh, well, whatever. But if you start looking at how, okay, this one fits into this one, this one plays into this one, this one plays into this one, we're talking about, um, you know, lockdowns, we're talking about control of people, we're talking about cashless society, we're talking about one world currency, we're talking about one world governance, we're talking about um, um, a lot of those things, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, you know, progressivism, the push for controlling people, um, government, you know, everybody uh, getting what they need from the government, the government providing everything. Um, yeah, I don't really believe in that. Not at all, because I believe in people taking care of themselves for providing for themselves. But I think if you start looking at all these things, it's like, whoa, I could see that. Whoa, look at how they all kind of fit together. I'm not big into that, you know, stuff. I don't talk about that stuff that much on this channel because I'm just not, I, I'm aware of it though. That's important. Be aware of it. The most powerful tool in prepping, right? This hat. <laughs> no, your brain, right? Yes. So we need to be mindful. We need to keep our head on a swivel. We need to pay attention to what's going around us. We need to pay attention to a lot of things. We need to know what's going on. And we need to know 
what we need to do to prepare ourselves for things that might happen, like lockdowns. Are you prepared to shelter in place? Are you prepared to bug out? Are you prepared to grow your own food, raise your own animals? Um, lots of different things, right? And preparedness. So, think about it. Prepare for it. And do your best to stay strong. I don't like the idea of lockdowns at all. But will it be pushed? Probably. I totally see it. Especially when we start getting more into later this year in the flu season, which is amazing. I haven't really heard of anybody having the flu. <laughs> Does that mean the flu was cured? Wow, that's a great accomplishment. Nobody ever even talked about that. <laughs> oh man, it's an agenda. I just, I despise the mainstream media and I despise just the false narratives out there. And this isn't a left versus right thing. It's a common sense. It's a human thing. It's a freedom thing. You want to be able to do what you want in your life. I want to grow my garden, take care of my family, get into raising some animals, and just be left alone. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not messing with anybody. I just don't want to be controlled. I want to be left alone to live a happy, simple, homestead style lifestyle. So anyway, stay strong, be aware of what's going on around you, and be ready for it. It's probably going to happen. Remember, prepping is living insurance. And prep a little every day. Have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.